Hey everyone, Mike here. I'm going to go over real quick this uh, this little hopper pattern, uh, either hopper or cricket or I don't care what you call it, you can call it any kind of bug you want. It's buggy enough to catch fish, that's all that's important to me. Uh, I typically don't go with any, in fact I haven't for a long time. Uh, I've been fly fishing since I was nine years old, been tying since, um, uh, since, since the mid 70s. Um, Always had a Renzetti vice. I, I love I love those vices, uh, but there's a lot of other good 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 vices to use out there. Um, but uh, to get on this uh, this pattern here using the mop, uh, this is a mop, cricket or hopper, and um, all you need to do is first I have a uh, 3366 uh, BR uh, size four hook. And we throw throw that up in the um, into the vise, okay. And then I'm going to use this uh, mop material uh, for the tail of the uh, of the hopper. It's a pretty easy thing to do. You just cut one of those one of these stems off here. And then what I like to do, because I'm not going to use the the entire piece of um, of mop. So what I do is I'm going to grab the fibers at the bottom side of where I cut. I'm going to grab the fibers and pull them off of the string that the uh, fibers are wound on and expose expose these threads here, strings, threads, um, until I've got a piece of this mop microfiber material. It's not really a mop for Pete's sakes. It's microfiber. Um, if they would have manufactured this originally for particularly for fly tying, uh, most likely would have been okay with everybody um, because it would, would not have been designed um, as a material that uh, sucks up liquids really well and that is um, what a lot of people think is a problem with this uh, with this material is that, that it's going to uh, you know suck up water and want to sink out there when, when you're fishing it but if you use this uh, well actually if you use a really good floatant on the um, on this out e either when you're finished here tying or when you're out on the water it'll help the water will repair, repel off this and the foam that we're going to use will help keep it above the water too. So let's go ahead and load this uh, hook up with some thread and I am not I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to change glasses because these are my computer glasses and these are actually my regular everyday uh, glasses. It's no fun getting old, trust me. Let this wind down on there really good. Okay, let's go ahead and cut that off there and keep on going back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to not go back as far as people normally go when they um, tie them on. That's about all the further back I'm going to go on this on this fly here. I'm going to want I'm going to want my material to be almost uh, right in line with the back side of the bend of the hook. That way it'll help uh, any short strikes um, and it'll, it'll help prevent the short strikes. So we'll go ahead and put this uh, microfiber material on and then when I get a get a good bite on it I will actually go back towards the material to grab some more of it and lock in any fibers that might want to pull out um, and that, that'll, that'll prevent them from, from pulling out. So let's go ahead and lock that down. Cut off that, uh, that string that held the microfibers in place. What I'm going to do next is take this piece of foam that I cut out on a, um, a silhouette machine. Uh, it's, a, it's a vinyl cutter, craft cutter. And we're going to go ahead and before, well, actually before I do that I'm going to throw a little dab of super glue right in here because what that will do is help prevent 
the foam from spinning around on on the thread. Now you'll see that I've got this just about, that's actually a little bit in, but that's okay. I've got this back towards the back and now on the um, on the uh, foam that I'm going to use, and if you're wanting to know the length that I used here so that if you're going to uh, cut some out by hand, this one here is an inch and a half long and all you, then all you've got to do is just cut and round off round off the uh, the edges here and then um, about halfway onto the onto the uh, microfiber material you're going to lay down the foam and let it lock into that uh, into that super glue just like that okay and then wrap 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 I wouldn't cinch down too hard um, but uh, just enough to kind of pull it together uh, up underneath here as you see right there. Now actually if you have a, a, a uh, rotary vise that's a good thing uh, because then you can do things like I'm doing here. If you don't have it that's okay just kind of raise up on this find out where the uh, eye of the hook is do a little bend on it and see how far you have to come back so we're going to have to come back about little over an eighth of an inch on the back side of that eye and then we're going to cinch that down and again you don't want to really over crank on this um, because it could tear your material okay so there we go that's going to make a really nice wing case on the top there so we'll go ahead and take our uh, our hackle feather here and Splay the fibers back just like that. I'm not even going to worry about cutting that tag off there. So I'm going to wrap it right on, right on top of it, just like that. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and palmer, wrap back, palmer, whatever you want to call it, the the uh, hackle. I wouldn't worry about it too much as far as. Um, You know, having the material right on top of it because we're going to have it's just a the wing case is going to kind of mat everything down anyway. There we go. And then we'll throw a few wraps on top, a few wraps on the bottom. Come around, cut off the uh, cut that stem off, and then pull these fibers back again and put a little bit of thread on it to hold everything back into place. Now all we're going to do is just take the wing case and fold it back on top of itself to create a head and an over wing case over top of those fibers, those uh, feather fibers. Just like that. And then I'm going to wrap it in such a way that I have you know about a sixteenth of an inch of a neck in there and what that neck is for is to have a place for my rubber legs to be locked in there's one there and there's one there go and then pull this forward both of them at the same time just like that and then cut them off I don't know three-eighths of an inch or so just like that okay and then I'm going to grab some dubbing here and since I'm pretty much using green as a theme it doesn't take very much just about that much right there and then we'll go ahead and put that on there. There we go. Pull it to the front. Put a little bit of a head on there because what that's going to do is help raise raise that head a little bit, and it'll provide uh, a little bit of a popping motion for you. Let's do another 
down here. Trying not to grab my rubber legs there. Must have crossed it. That's okay. It broke. But that's okay because I have a double whip finish on there. And then put a little head cement on the uh, threads on the head of the, the head. And uh, that's it, really. I mean, that's, um, I mean, you do a few other things if, if you want. One thing you want to do is separate these um, front legs. Just grab. What I've got to, is two pieces of this rubber leg material. There we go. And there you go. There's the, uh, oops, take that out of there so you can see it a little better. There's the, uh, the cricket or hopper or whatever you want to call it. It's got a microfiber tail on it. It's a very simple pattern. I'm sure if you uh, put these together and take them out, you're going to definitely get into bluegill, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass. I had a guy comment on the one that I posted the other day, the orange collar one. Um, uh, she, what did I do with it? Well, there's one right there. That's one. That's actually a little different. I didn't use rubber legs. I just used a um, a, a uh, long hackled feather. That's the um, the sh the uh, slap sh something whatever something like that. It's pronounced like that. Um, and I used let that be be the legs um, themselves. Again, like I said, just get creative with it. Um, the only thing that's the rule here, if there are any rules is uh, try and keep your proportions. Um, the, I like the fibers down here because it kind of hides the hook. Um, I think it's got a good profile on it from underneath on the water. Uh, as, as you can see right there, that, that's the fish view right there. That's, that's our view, kind of a profile view there. Um, it's a nice, it's, it's gonna be a nice, uh, nice fly to use. Anyway, um, if you found this video useful, I do plan on doing more. I, I've got a long way to go. I don't have that many videos up, I know. Uh, but I have been busy. There are some other things I'm trying to do in my retirement here. Uh, but people, I had a number of people ask me about doing a quick pattern on this. So uh, if you do like it and you like my channel, uh, consider subscribing. I, I promise I'll be getting some more up, and I, but I won't inundate you with... Uh, um, you know, a, a overly abundant number of, of flies. It's my, my channel's mostly going to be about uh, free forming, uh, you know, using materials and throwing things together um, because I don't chase trout. Although I did have a guy comment on the orange one that I put up that he, he, would, he would definitely use this in the mountains over in, uh, I think, Idaho or, or someplace out west. Um, which was kind of cool. If, they, if there are guys out there that think these mop flies will, will do well, then um, they will do well. Anyway, again, this is Mike. Uh, until the next video, consider subscribing. And until the next video, we'll catch you later.